Hey guys, today in this video we will understand self search procedure in LTE. This procedure is very crucial for UE as during this procedure UE acquires time and frequency synchronization and also comes to know about many system parameters. In this video we will understand how UE acquires synchronization and gets information about all these parameters during self search procedure. These parameters are Physical cell ID. In LTE, physical cell ID uniquely identifies a cell. Second is cyclic prefix. There could be normal or extended cyclic prefix configured in the cell. UE has to detect type of cyclic prefix used so that it can send data to the network. Multiplexing technique used FTD or TDD. Many physical layer parameters are dependent on multiplexing technique. So, it is very crucial for UE to know multiplexing technique. Cell bandwidth. Cell bandwidth in LTE can have many values such as 10 MHz, 20 MHz, etc. Master information block broadcasts cell bandwidth. So, in order to get cell bandwidth, UE must decode physical broadcast channel to read master information block. We will see how UE decodes physical broadcast channel. Guys, if your physical ear concepts are not clear, I would strongly recommend that you go to my another video and get them cleared, then you come back to this video. Let's start now, guys. First, we will understand slot synchronization and frame synchronization. During slot synchronization, UE gets to know starting of the slot and during frame synchronization UE gets to know starting of a frame. Here is the frame structure of FDD system for both normal and extended cyclic prefixes. It shows symbols in which PSS and SSS are transmitted over the ear interface. You can easily notice that PSS is transmitted in last OFDM symbol of first and eleventh slots of radio frame and SSS is transmitted in symbol immediately preceding PSS. Now here is the frame structure of TDD system for both normal and extended cyclic prefixes. It shows symbol in which PSS and SSS are transmitted over the ear interface. You can easily notice that PSS is transmitted in third symbol of third and thirteenth slot of radio frame and SSS is transmitted in third symbol earlier than PSS. As same PSS is transmitted in both slots, so by using only PSS, you cannot detect the frame boundary. Two SSS transmissions in a radio frame change in a specific order to enable UE to detect frame boundary. So we can conclude that PSS is used for slot synchronization and SSS is used for frame synchronization. There is one more important observation to be made here. You can easily notice that relative positioning of PSS and SSS for FDD and TDD is different in a radio frame. So by decoding PSS and SSS, UE can detect which multiplexing technique is used. As cyclic prefix is unknown to UE at this stage, so precise positioning of SSS is not known to UE. For both FDD and TDD, there are two possible positions of SSS based on CP used. UE blindly detect SSS by checking for the SSS at the two possible positions. This way, UE comes to know whether normal or extended cyclic prefix is configured in the cell. Now we will understand how UE decodes physical cell ID using PSS and SSS. There are total 504 physical cell identities in LTE. All these identities are divided into 168 groups, each group having three cell identities. So, Finding a unique cell ID is a two step process. First step is a group of cell IDs, and second step, find one unique ID from that group. 
To enable this two-step decoding process, there are 168 possible SSS sequences, where each SSS sequence denotes a group of three cell IDs and three PSS sequences where each PSS sequence corresponds to one unique cell ID from that group. Hence, by decoding unique sequence of SSS and PSS, UE can easily decode unique physical cell ID. Both PSS and SSS are nothing but a sequence of 62 symbols. PSS and SSS are transmitted only on central 72 resource elements of entire system bandwidth. These 62 symbols are mapped only to central 62 resource elements and 5 resource elements are left unused at both extremities. But why do we do so? Why do we keep 5 resource elements unused at both extremities? There are two main reasons for this. This scheme enables UE to detect PSS and SSS using 64 size FFT because for FFT after 64, next size is 128. And second reason is it leads to a lower sampling rate than would have been necessary if all 72 subcarriers were used in the central 6 resource blocks. System bandwidth in LTE could have any value such as 15 MHz or 20 MHz, but irrespective of system bandwidth, PSS and SSS are transmitted in central 6 resource blocks. Interestingly, physical broadcast channel is also mapped to central 6 resource blocks. As UE comes to know about these 6 central resource blocks during synchronization process, it can decode physical broadcast channel also to read master information block to get system bandwidth. This way, UE can synchronize to the network without having prior knowledge of the system bandwidth. That is all for today guys. Hope you would have enjoyed this video. Share your comments and hit the like button. My next video will be on random access. Subscribe to my channel and keep waiting till then guys. Bye bye.